Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the afternoon session of Breakout Startups. As mentioned, my name is Sunil Sharma. I am the co-host of Collision, which will be taking place in Toronto next year in May of 2019. And for three glorious years, we're going to welcome you all to Canada to participate in another high growth country and market for the most amazing companies in the world. I'm also the managing director of Techstars in Toronto. And Techstars is the worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. And that's why Techstars loves being part of Web Summit, which is the largest gathering of entrepreneurs in the world. I'm surrounded by some Canadians and some Techstars colleagues. Uh, Fatima, this is your first Web Summit, and you're going to be speaking here later today. Absolutely. I'm on in a couple hours, and I can't wait. That's amazing. And uh, Claudio, an investor from Canada, any, any big observations about what you've seen here in Lisbon already? I love the energy in the room. Uh, it's just been phenomenal. OK. Well, this morning you met with 12 of the fastest growing breakout startups in the world. And this afternoon, you're going to meet with eight of the fastest scaling growth companies in the world. So first up is Aptiv. Aptiv is a leading provider of digital fitness content based out of New York City. Representing Aptiv, please welcome founder and CEO, Ethan Agarwal. Good afternoon, Web Summit. My name is Ethan Agarwal. I'm the founder and CEO of Aptiv. I'm going to start uh, with a question. How many people in this room have a Spotify membership? Raise your hand. All right, I'm seeing about 40, 50%. How many people in this room work out once a week? And you can lie if you want. Just raise your hand. OK, so it's about the same 40 to 50%. That's a great way to describe what Aptiv is, is that we're Spotify for fitness. What we do is we create audio-based workout content that can be consumed on an unlimited, on-demand basis. So there's a couple things about who we are and what we do that's unique. Number one is that we focus exclusively on audio. And that's really important, because when you think about working out, video is not a great medium. You can't run down the street while staring at a video on your phone. You can't do yoga while trying to crane your neck to look up at a screen. That's a bad user experience. Audio allows for flexibility. It allows for freedom of movement. Audio is the best delivery mechanism for fitness content, and that's what we focus on. Second is we focus on music. Music is the best way to drive an effective workout. When you tie the pace of the music to the lyrics, to the rhythm, to the energy, to the same part of the workout, to the instructions of the workout, you create a human experience. You create a workout experience unlike anything other. It's the only way to work out. If you think about dancing, dancing to music, your body is moving to a beat. That's the same thing with working out. Your body is moving to a beat. That's why music is so critically important. And last is that we focus on a breadth of content. So we have 22 categories across the product, including everything from running to strength training, meditation, yoga, et cetera. And we have 2,500 classes available. So Second what we're going to hear, uh, uh, well, what you'll see here is uh, we launched the company about three years ago. I founded it. Uh, I come from a background of finance and consulting. And uh, what we did is we raised uh, a good amount of money rather quickly because we grew so quickly. So we raised about $50 million in 20 months, including from investors like Amazon, Disney, Bose, and Warner Music Group. We're the only company in the world that both Amazon and Disney have invested in, which is quite a humbling experience. We have over 200,000 paying members, and the company is not even three years old yet. Our, our members are taking an average of 30,000 classes a day. To put that in context, the average studio that you all may have heard of, the, the largest ones, typically do about 10,000 classes a day. So we're three times bigger than that. And in addition, our classes have been taken 18 million times in the last two and a half years. So that's really exciting. So it naturally begs the question of what's next. And uh, I'm very proud to announce here at Web Summit that as of today, Aptiv is now available in 20 countries around the world. 
we are now available globally. This is really important because audio serves as an excellent distribution medium, meaning you don't have to have expensive hardware with you. You can consume it with the phone that's in your pocket, and everyone has that phone around the world. It also allows you to consume audio no matter where you are, so you can take your workout with you. That's all from me. Uh, thank you. My name is Ethan. You can find me on, uh, at Ethan Agarwal on Twitter, or you can visit Aptiv.com for a free seven-day trial. Thank you. OK, big a round of applause for Ethan Agarwal. That was amazing. And next up is one of the most exciting Portuguese startups. It's called Unbabble. It's translation as a service. And please welcome co-founder and CEO Vasco Calais Pedro. Hello, I'm Vasco. I'm co-founder and CEO of Unbabble. And when it comes to the world, Despite all of us speaking it, English is not our first language. In fact, English represents 20% of the online content in the world. What we're seeing today is the rise of a Chinese internet, a Brazilian internet, a Russian internet. But when it comes to customer service, if you happen to be born in a country where English is not your language, you're a bit out of luck, because there is a customer service gap when it comes to the experience that we provide to people that don't speak English. That's where we help. We help companies scale their global customer support. That means that any company that, for example, wants to serve the German market can take that team and move it anywhere in the world without worrying about language. And we make sure that their agents can provide customer support in 28 languages anywhere in the world, anytime. Now, we do this because we combine artificial intelligence with a crowd of humans, right now about 100,000, that help create the most scalable, highest quality translation platform in the world. We're developing the world's translation layer. And even though right now we're very focused in customer support, this will be applicable to marketing, to videos, to every single process that a business has to scale and be global. AI is driving change in the world. And it's going to happen the same in anywhere that a business is global. We are very focused on a very specific mission in the next five years. In the next five years, we want to translate 25% of all the world's digital customer service interactions and make sure that if you don't speak English, you still have amazing customer support. But that is just the beginning. We started in 2013. We're now 150 people, offices here, San Francisco, London, New York, we raised our Series B this year, uh, and pretty soon, you're going to be able to use and babble to communicate with any business in any language. Thank you. Work, Basco. Moving around the world, now we're going to hit London, and where we have Unmade. A London-based startup, Unmade sits at the intersection of hardware, software, and knitwear, creating a platform for unique custom clothing on an industrial scale. Here to tell us more is Christy Amory, co-founder and fashion director. Hi. Software has changed the way that all of our Every, let me start again. <laughs> Software has changed the way that we all operate across every industry, and fashion industry is no exception. We started off with social media and the change that it's had with brands like Boohoo and ASOS, and then also the retail platforms such as Farfetch and Rent the Runway that have changed the way that we buy our clothes. But what's, this has all been in the front end. This is the sexy stuff that we all see as consumers. 
what's been happening in the back end or the supply chain which supports all of these changes? In short, not a lot. Since, we've, since the transformation in the 1960s, where everything in the supply chain changed from being individual and specifically made, we've changed to unit cost being supreme. And in reaction, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't normally get to do these, so it's actually a bit of a treat for me that I've been allowed out. But actually, there's quite a lot of you guys, and it's a little bit intimidating, if I'm honest. <laughs> so, <laughs> the supply chain, in short, hasn't changed a lot. It's a bit like the back end of the supply chain and of the whole industry. So, what changes have made? Nothing really, which has led to mass overproduction. This is because everything that we buy in the fashion industry, the decision has to be made up to 12 months in advance, and large orders placed by brands on customer prediction. This leads up to, excuse me, this leads to 15% overproduction on a global scale. Just to put some numbers around this, this is $400 billion of stock worldwide that goes direct to landfill or it's burnt for fuel. In some brands, this can be as high as 30%. At Unmade, we believe that this doesn't make any sense and that we should have the end of mass production and mass consumption and instead move to an industry that's consumer focused demand-driven, and powered by digital technology. We do this by enabling brands, such as this product that we had on Farfetch, to be able to customize and play with the design before sending it direct to manufacture, where all of the data is produced automatically, specific to the machine and material, before the before the paperwork and all of the shipping documents are also created so the garment can be sent direct to the consumer, therefore reducing needs for warehousing or distribution centers. This can take production time of a specific garment down from 12 months down to just one to two weeks. We're unmade. On demand is the future. Only make something once it's been made, fashion made by design. Thank you. That was fantastic, Christy. Now, talk about a growth story. Since their presence last year here at Web Summit, Gremlin has raised both, both its Series A and Series B rounds. So please welcome back to Web Summit, CEO and co-founder, Colton Andrus from Gremlin. Thank you very much. What a great opportunity to be here. What happens when the internet breaks? What do your customers experience when your service or product isn't available? We felt this pain growing up at companies like Amazon and Netflix. And we found the solution. It's this new idea, this new engineering discipline of chaos engineering. Chaos engineering is this opportunity for us to thoughtfully plan experiments, to inject and break our own systems, to be able to understand the weaknesses, to find them and to fix them before they result in customer-facing outages. This may sound like a counterintuitive idea, but with that, I'll refer to the vaccine, an analogy I often use to explain this concept. We could go back 200 years, and we might ask people, hey, we want to inject you with this disease. Is that a good idea? Are you OK with it? You might have got some pushback. But we know now that there's a lot of evidence that supports this process, the scientific process of hormesis. 
The same process applies in our technical systems and in our social systems. We want to inject a small amount of harm in order to uncover weaknesses and to build an immunity. I picked a few examples of recent outages that have made the press. Prime Day for Amazon this year. It was estimated to have cost Amazon tens of millions to, or millions to tens of millions of dollars. So that's an expensive day. If you're a Black Friday or an e-commerce company, you can imagine what an outage on that day costs you in terms of revenue. Not to mention the impact to your brand, to customer trust. Slack, we're a remote by default company. We use Slack every day to coordinate and communicate. We've had a few rough encounters this year where we've been unable to use that. And our productivity has been hit as a result. We've had a couple of major airline outages. Delta and British Airways come to mind, both estimated to have cost hundreds of millions of dollars. But perhaps more importantly, they've had an impact to our lives, our ability to travel, our ability to do business, our ability to visit and see our loved ones. As we as a society become increasingly reliant on the internet for our finances, for our health care, for our travel and communications, it becomes increasingly more important that these systems work and that these critical systems work almost all the time. And the key to that is being able to go and to prevent these outages, to test these failures. So how do we do this? We're not randomly breaking things. This isn't an ad hoc method. We're applying the scientific method. We're being very thoughtful about the experiments that we want to run. We have a hypothesis. We're going to validate that hypothesis. This gives us an opportunity to test and train, again, not just our systems, but our teams. There's a reason we run fire drills. And that's because when there's a high urgency event, we need to have practiced in advance. People need to keep a cool head and know what to do. And this applies in our systems the same as it does in our, in our processes. So Gremlin's a company that has built tools and services to help people implement this new discipline of chaos engineering. Something to be safe, secure, and simple. Our mission is to build a more resilient and reliable internet. Thank you. OK, great job. And continuing with our world tour, our next stop is Dublin, Ireland, where Mark Cummins is the CEO of Pointy. Pointy helps companies bring their products online. Please welcome Mark to tell us more. Hello, Web Summit. It's a lot of you here today. So I'm Mark from Pointy. We started Pointy because we noticed a problem. In a world that's increasingly digital, local retailers are starting to become invisible. Think about what happens if you're trying to buy a product and you don't know where that product is for sale. If you're like most people, you probably pull out your phone and search for the product. And what happens next is a deeply broken experience. You're going to see results from e-commerce websites, but nothing from your local stores. That product might be available five minutes away from where you're currently standing. But if you can't discover that information, you can't buy that product, the local retailer loses a sale, and you're inconvenienced. It's probably more convenient for you to pick up something that's five minutes away than it is to wait for the e-commerce delivery. So Pointy is about solving that problem. We want to bring local retailers into the digital age and help them prosper. So why has nobody solved this before? It turns out that collecting live inventory information from local retailers is an incredibly hard problem. The information that you need is trapped in a whole set of legacy retail systems in hundreds of different data formats, and none of it is connected to the cloud. That's why we invented the Pointy Box. The Pointy Box is a small device that a retailer connects to the barcode scanner in the store. And when the retailer connects that device, it's going to stream the live inventory of that store to the cloud. And we're going to create a website for that retailer. If we advance the slides. We're going to create a website for that retailer that's live, showing everything that's in the store. And we've obsessed about making this process low friction, seamless for the retailer. Retailers are very busy. They have 
hundreds of things to take care of. So our guiding principle is no work for the retailer. They just attach the device, and we do everything else. We set up the website for them. We manage all of the product data. We keep it up to date as things change in the store, as products come in and out of the stock during the day. And focusing on that low friction has led us to really get this product to scale in a way that hasn't happened before. Since we started this, thousands and thousands of retailers across three continents have joined Pointy. And that number is increasing rapidly every day. And I'm very, very proud to announce at Web Summit here today that 1% of all retailers across the United States are now on Pointy. That number is something that is just a start. The world is, is full of local retailers, and we want to bring every single one of them online. But already, in every town and every city across the US, retailers are starting to fix their online visibility. That's a really big deal, because 90% of commerce still takes place in brick and mortar stores. Local retail is part of the future. It just needs better tools. Pointy is about making that happen. Thank you. Fantastic. OK, next stop is West Hollywood. From West Hollywood, we have Jill Layfield, who is the CEO and co-founder of Tamara Mellon, one of the world's most exciting shoe brands. Please give it up for Jill. Oh, wow. <laughs> Woo. Hi, everyone. My name is Jill Layfield. I am the CEO and co-founder of Tamar Mellon. Tamar Mellon is a direct-to-consumer women's luxury footwear brand. It was co-founded in October of 2016 by myself and my partner, Tamar Mellon, who was previously the creative director and co-founder of Jimmy Choo. We are looking to build the next generation of um, luxury brands, starting with footwear. Hmm, OK. <laughs> yeah, starting with doing slides in languages that nobody can understand. Um, so I'm going to just have you not follow along on the slides. So first off, we are continuing to deliver luxury footwear. And what that means is, is that we're manufacturing our product in the best Italian factories um, that you can find. However, because we're not distributing through wholesale channels, we're delivering those shoes at roughly 50% of the cost and price that you would find in another luxury brand. Uh, so a big price advantage by going direct to consumer. The second thing that we're doing is we aren't delivering and introducing product to our consumers on a traditional fashion calendar. So with a traditional luxury brand, they're designing product roughly 12 months before the consumer actually sees the product and can buy it. Because we're not distributing through wholesale channels, we're continuously designing product and we're releasing it weekly. A big advantage when consumer preferences are changing. Also, because we're not going through wholesale channels, we're, the feedback loop from the customer is much, much more immediate. So we're getting millions and millions of rows of data every day on what she wants, when she wants it, and giving it to her on that schedule. We're also reimagining the luxury experience. So I can't sort of walk you through everything we're doing. But one of the most interesting things we launched with was on the service side. We launched with a service called Cobbler Concierge. So if you buy a pair of shoes from Tamar Mellon, for two years, if you scuff a heel or you need your shoes clean, you can visit a seamless online experience, ship your shoes back to us, and we'll return them to you good as new. Finally, we're sort of rethinking what it means to build a luxury brand for today's consumer. So as much as technology and service and channel strategies matter, brand matters the most to a consumer. Where luxury brands created 20 years ago were all about pride of association through status. We're, we're building a brand where pride of association is based on a common and core set of values anchored in feminism. Well, I would change my slide, but. <laughs> so I think if I was going to leave you with one thing, I would say that the biggest lesson we've had in our first two years at, is sort of our mantra internally and as we think about you know, everything that we do when we're creating uh, the user experience or really creating the brand, and that is the safe way is the risky way, and the risky way is the 
safe way. If you build a culture of risk taking and you sort of embrace that every day and everything you do, that'll translate into the user experience. So I hope you all take a few risks with your business and build a great uh, new brand and experience. Thank you. So we've been talking about Collision, and from my home country of Canada, and from Montreal in specifics, I will, I'm very excited to be welcoming a company uh, that Element AI that's completed a massive A round, and the CEO and founder, a great friend of mine, JF Gagne from Element AI. Thank you, Sunil. Great to be here. So you all warm up with Aptiv, so quick survey again. Please, by a raise of hand, how many of you had a car accident recently? Just that? You guys are lucky, or good drivers, maybe. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, car accidents happen all the time. But and, you know, besides getting hurt, one of the biggest uh, friction when that happens is actually the claims processing. You know, how long does it take? Two weeks, a month, a year sometimes. Working with a very large insurer in Asia that deploy our product that does claim augmentation, they've managed to took the process down to just a few hours. So that's just one example of how Element AI augments decisions in organizations, uh, like in the financial sector and in the supply chain sector. So we've built a collection of software as a service products that really enables decision makers in organizations to accelerate the decision process, automate the simple cases, and really learn proactively based on every interaction with users. Now, that's nice, but why now? So we've seen a lot of progress in AI recently. And one, there's two major benefits uh, that we're really surfing using the, using the, the advance in artificial intelligence. The first one is that the, the technology is now capable of perceiving the world by itself. Really, it's broadening by being capable of tapping into unstructured data like text and images. The horizon of how fast a decision can be connected to events that are happening in the world. The second benefit is by learning using data example instead of leveraging engineers and business analysts that needs to code 100,000 different user uh, interfaces, um, you can really speed up the development process, reducing the footprint dramatically. We're leveraging these, these advances into our platform and our architecture, not only to serve insurance business, but also to help with cybersecurity, really enabling analysts in security operating center to go through massive tons of data and low-level signal to make sense of the ch what, what is potentially a threat, diagnose, and then automate the decision-making at the back. We do the same thing with equity analysts in big asset managers, and also in logistics with ports and, uh, and other uh, logistics provider that revolves around it. Element AI has been on a rocket growth. Uh, we launched a company. We were four co-founders in 2016, October. It's been two years, actually, uh, a week ago. And uh, since then, you know, we've been driving in a lot of value to our customers, augmenting their decision. We're now over 450 employees. Uh, we just hired 30 uh, as of uh, the last two weeks. Uh, we've produced over 50 patents, and 40 scientific papers were published in the main conferences. We operate in five offices around the world, four countries, and over three continents. We serve a set of uh, global 2,000 customers for the moment. We have over 300 right now that are engaged with us, and many more to come. As this becomes mature, and we, we keep driving maturity and scale in our products, we hope to not only serve these big customers, but also serve mid-size and small companies. So hopefully, you join us in that revolution, and then you, we collaborate to drive positive change using artificial intelligence. Thank you. Okay, thank you, JF. Okay, our last one. This one is a fun one. 
from Detroit, Michigan, the world's best platform for buying sneakers, streetwear, handbags, watches. Please welcome Josh Luber from StockX. Which ones are which? Nikes, Yeezys, Jordans, and Jordans. How does the sneaker industry function as a stock market? Only 23 of these have been made. Stuff. And you get all this in the box over on StockX. I'm Josh Luber, CEO over at StockX. What are you looking for in terms of sneakers tonight? Nobody pray for me. It been a day for me. Yeah, yeah. I remember syrup sandwiches and crime allowances for nesting on them with some counterfeits, but now I'm counting this. Parmesan with my accountant lives in Mexico. Welcome to StockX TV. I'm here with Eminem to pick up shoes for the charity auction on StockX. I'm here with Eminem too. There's, you know, the ones, the threes, the fours, the elevens. Those are shoes that I remember as a kid being like, those are amazing, those are incredible. I got my Yeezys, got my NMDs, I wore the shit out of these two. StockX and Eminem partnered for a hurricane relief campaign, and we raised almost $450,000. So you gotta get those. You don't have a pair of Jordans, you gotta get those. $52,000. These are via StockX, right? Most important sneaker in shoe wear history. It's crazy to see that something like sneakers can have this type of an effect. We've launched watches, handbags, and streetwear. What if there was a stock market of things? Hold up. What the f is a sneaker stock market? By the end of Q1, StockX will have over 1,000 full-time team members and be at over $2 billion run rate. But to answer 50's question, it takes a lot more than a few minutes. So I know you're wondering and thinking, big stage, big audience, big arena, and I'm going to use half my time showing a video? I'm actually going to use the full time. So. You want to buy a pair of black C-Man 3s, huh? A real pair. And you want the best price? Where do you even start? Here's a thousand auction listings. Take two energy drinks and call me in the morning. How do I even know if the shoe is real? What's a fair price for it? And if I have a problem, is the seller going to even take care of me? Oh, yeah. A sneaker is a commodity. It should be dead simple to buy a dead stock pair. Welcome to Stock X, an actual stock market for sneakers. It's actually a stock market of things. At Stock X, a transaction occurs when a bid and then ask me. A buyer wants to buy a size 10 black seaman. He submits a bid, the price he's willing to pay. Now the entire world knows there's a legit offer because it's tied to his PayPal account. He can go about his day in confidence knowing that if someone is selling for 550, no cop. Is that a fing daiquiri? Yeah, bro. A seller has a size 10 black cement. She can place an ask or a listing for sale. If she sees someone that has placed a bid for 550, she can sell it immediately. With two clicks, done deal. Am I the only one not drinking a beach drink? But how do I know if these are real? Hassan, come on, really? What? Every pair of sneakers sold on Stock X passes through our trading floor. With dudes who look like James Harden make sure you never get scammed ever again. Now that's a legit check. The only thing more legit would be if dudes who look like Wale come in and do the voiceovers. That was amazing. Well done, Josh. Well done to all eight companies. Those are breakout startups. They're trending around the world. We're super proud of you. We're proud to have you as part of Web Summit. We're going to take a quick break. Tomorrow, we're doing this same time, same place. But don't go anywhere, because in five minutes, we're bringing out Sophia the robot.